Today you're going to learn how to write a Docker file. I'm not only going to show you how to write these files, I'm also telling you why we are going to write these files. At the end of this video, you're going to be able to read those files, write those files, and create your own images. Let's go! If you're new to Docker, you will come across the difference between containers and images. Images are frozen snapshots of containers. They are immutable, so they can change once created. Containers are running instances of these images. So there can be many containers from one and the same image. But how do we create these images and why? That's a good question. Let's say you want to ship some sort of software together with a base configuration. You would create an image out of it. Like an Ubuntu Live CD, remember those? Or your freshly installed Windows when you create a backup in case your system goes bust. Restore the backup and all is good. That's not so different with images and containers. Let's look at some very simplistic PHP app which we transform into an image. The first thing is to create an actual Docker file. I'm doing this in an empty folder. Every Docker file starts with a from line. It tells Docker what's the so-called base image underneath. Images are stored in layers, so every layer contains only the changes between the current image and the base image underneath. And just as an FYI, the lowest image is called scratch and contains literally nothing. I'm going to take an already existing PHP image tag with version 7.2 CLI, so for command line interface. I got this from the Docker Hub at hub.docker.com, which is an image registry automatically integrated in Docker. That means once my image is created, it will have all nice features from a PHP 7.2 on the command line integrated. That means I can run PHP files, essentially. Let's run some more commands. On top of my PHP 7.2 CLI image, I want to create a directory called my project. Then I want to copy an index.php file into that folder. And then I also want to set my work tier to that directory, more on that later. The work tier sets the working directory for pretty much any command. That means I could simply execute php index.php and it should execute this once a new container is started from that image. You will see that later. Now, obviously, I also have to create that index.php file or else I can't copy that into the project or the image. Let's just echo some hello world string here. Next, make sure your Docker daemon is running. Open a command line like PowerShell or a terminal. If you're working with Visual Studio Code, you can also simply open the integrated terminal. Then cd into the directory where your Docker file is located at. And then run docker build t for tagging my PHP app. Period. Don't forget the period at the end and hit enter. What happens next is that Docker will take the base image, PHP 7.2 CLI, and add your commands of your Docker file as steps or layers on top. So step one was your from line. Step two was your run command. Step three is the copy command and so on. Next, let's list the existing images we have in our system. Type in Docker image ls or Docker images. You see the newly created MyPHP image in our image list. It's tagged as latest. Why is that? Because we didn't give it a specific tag. You also see a specific image ID here when it was created and also the size. One thing to note about the size is that the base image already has around 400 megabytes. So our new image can't be smaller than this one. If you want a smaller image, then start with a smaller base image and configure it accordingly. Let's run this image now. We run it as a new container. Docker run my PHP app. It will output us hello world string from our index PHP file. Why is that? Because in our Docker file we specified that it should run the command PHP index PHP once the container starts. One problem though is the index PHP is now baked into the image. So even though we changed the index PHP here, it won't change it inside the image we would have to recreate the image. So a better idea about images is to provide an existing configuration for an environment like extra installed PHP packages necessary to run the index PHP app and then do volume mounting for any data files into the container so that the content of the index PHP files changes on the fly. Let's not clutter our system and do some cleanup before we finish this video. To do that, first we need to stop and remove all containers running from that image. List the containers with docker ps-a. Then remove the containers by their container ID with docker rm. Next, you can remove the image with docker rmi, my PHP app. That's it. That's how you build an image from a Docker file. Now it's your turn. 
I'm sure it's easy to start using Dockerfellas for you now. Let me know in the comments below which base image you are using. If you like this video and like to see more of them, subscribe to this channel and give a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.